So if you're looking at Millie, these are her new carbon brushes. Let's fit them to her and get her back and running just like she has been doing for the past 12 and a half years. And you're watching Florence Ballet 3060 on film. task with any meter is of course pulling the machine out. Well, well luckily it doesn't have any feet on it. So, swing the machine round and I'm going to isolate the power to the machine which is I can't access so I'm going to flick off from the fuse. That disconnects all the power to um, the plugs it means the LG and our smart meter are out of service. So yeah, we'll open that. Swing the machine round. Because on a meter you have to undo the whole back in order to do this and clean the lid. So, so I'm using a screwdriver with removable sockets and like a, a screw head bit. So now mealers aren't like standard washing machines, they use Torx head screws or star screws. On meters, there are two screws on either side of the lid that you have to take out this cover here, and there are also two holding at the back. The whole machine is put together with these torque screws. So what you can do with this is just use the end of a flathead screwdriver, just to prise this off. Basically what the whole point WMAs have, there's one either side, so one here and one at the other end. No, this is not a training video or anything, I'm just showing you me doing this, so before anyone comments anything like saying, oh, you know, don't you, do not use this as a way to copy it. And the coronation straight in the background, there we go. So we choose whichever size will fit this screw. I think if we'll go for this one, let me have a look. No, it's too big. Mm. Might be this one. So guys, yep, bingo. Not all the torx heads are the same size. If it doesn't come out straight away, don't worry about it. But keep all your screws lined up neatly. A bit of one on the other side. seems to not want to come out, so uh, we got it in the end. Right. If it doesn't come out, we'll just get the ones at the back. Quite simple out, the machines have at the back. Now remember that these are actual little brackets that the lid slots onto. The lid isn't fastened to the top of the machine like you went out from a standard machine. No, no. There's not really any tutorials for Miele machines. And these slide back. Might require a bit of a bash. I can't, you know what, I can't remember if these have opened. Oh, they lift up. end here, like so, that's the lid off, it. that's it, that's done up, put the lid to one side, of course the, well, I will check the power is off anyway, we let the lid power is off, and oh, go over one have a look at the inside, the bloody car that looks like. S 
stainless steel tab. Fortunately, not at hot point, the motor is at the bottom of this machine. So yes, we will uh, we'll have a look at that and um, get to work. So just remove these little bits that the lid rests on. So, also got to get the front of the machine off. If you haven't got any power to your machine because you cut it off, just undo from here. That's why this string is here, by the way, because my filter flap doesn't stay down. I'm going to prise the door seal band off. I absolutely hate doing this one. I've had many wheels getting this back on. So, just prise it with a screwdriver and peel it away. I dislike working on any machine that has these. It's, sometimes it's a bit of a war to get back on. Peel off the whole front like that. Just leave it inside. I've got to undo this one here which requires a different size Torx uh, head to it. Where is my Torx to? Standard one too small what I use so a bit bigger there you go that holds the sort of support bar to the machine and then you put it away a large screw like that I keep that well separate from everything I've got to pull away the kick strip which on these can be a bit of a Oh, got there in the end. That's going to need a bit of a good clean, that is. That side. And I get to the two screws that are at the base of the machine. Here. And I'm going to use my uh, standard forks again because these now are the smaller size. You might just want to hold your hand against the front panel because there is nothing, no screws holding it on at the top just to give it a bit of leverage. There are two screws you can do on either side of the machine. Feel the front panel begin to drop slightly so I just wish meters had removable back panels to them. Everything would be so much more easier. But unfortunately life ain't meant to be easy, is it? Luke Kneebone always wanted me to do a video of this. Hope you're enjoying this. Right, there we go. So Millie's going to try and collapse on me now. But I ain't going to let her do that. Holding the front panel to the machine. 
lever that off gently. I'm just going to disconnect the uh, interlock cable and just get it to the side or in there and put this to one side. Go. I'll keep all the uh, screws for that over here so I know that's for the front panel. Now we've got to get to moving the side off the machine. So with meters you actually access the machine through the side on these. There's no other screws on that one. Don't think there's anything holding the fascia on, is there? No. Nor is there one behind the fascia. If you've seen those little black squares, they're furniture pads. I um, had to put them on the machine because the when the machine was shipped back from Australia, they somehow damaged the front panel. Well, not damaged, but they somehow knocked it slightly loose, so the machine was making an awful rattle on spin. So I had to put them there to stop, stop that. Make sure there's nothing else there. There will most likely be a screw underneath. Or can I now just yank that from the side? No, there we go. Oh, hang on, I think there's one more. Oh, it's just that. There we go. Side panel off. Ooh, he's got that BC motor down there. Let's have a little look at this, shall we? So that's one of her shock absorbers. Still going strong. Ooh, there's a little web there. Oh god we don't want that. I said the inners, that's our motor there. So we're gonna have fun getting that. Because we can't actually move the back panel off this. But it's the frame the machine's built on, but you see how it's built at an angle. So that also supports the angle fascia models as well. In theory we could actually fit one to her. <laughs> but yeah, there's the four stage or well, the four springs. It's interesting to see the inside of it for once. The cast iron weight and the bearing frame at the back, which is also cast iron. And all this frame here as well. Yeah, there's plenty of bearing frames there. So yeah, quite a big motor they've got. Well, it's a shocking thing that that motor never hits the base of the machine. That's the brush motor. The, motor, the inverter motors are actually different. Um, I'm not sure, but I think that is also for when it's the... I think that's if you map... The machine's meant to have three shock absorbers as opposed to two. The seven and eight kilo models will have that. Anyway, so with meters, they have a carbon brush holder on their motors as opposed to it just being standard mounting. So my tripod won't allow me to get in here. So I can undo. I don't have to, I don't think I have to set the motor out. So for the awkward angle, my tripod is not low enough to allow me to get in here. So I'm literally resting the camera on the base of the machine, like so, and my phone side of the fall over. One out. I hate these torques, screws, I do. Obviously, I obviously don't mind, I've got, you know, attachments for them, but just makes it a bit more annoying having to have separate tools and rather than swapping on the user standard. I wonder if it was to deter people from trying to repair their own machines, then we have to just buy a star set. It's also called star screws, is what they're also called. Camera sets there. See the lengths I go just to get videos for you guys. Well, 
That's the motor plug. Millie, Millie, Millie. Why must you make everything harder? Oh, I've got serious heartburn right now. Does this just pull out or is there going to be some sort of unexpected... I've got to undo that so I can pull the cable off. Le Cable. That's probably not how you pronounce anything in French, but... Damn it, Millie. Ah, oh, you know what? It's a bloody cable tie, that's why. Um, that's the whole assembly disconnected and I've taken a photo of where the wires go. That's a future reference when I put it back. Um, I'll try and get rid of that cable tie, but that's the least of my worries at the moment. So that there is the carbon brush cover. That's loads of carbon dust there, 12.5 years worth of that. Right, now we've got to get, now we have to get hold of the offending brushes. I don't know the hell they are on this thing. Time to get busy with the screwdrivers again. Gonna undo all those. Oh, sorry guys. But forgive me, but it's not easy filming inside a meter machine. So a bit easier. We never have to get the motor out, we just gotta get this carbon brush holder off. So I've got an inverter motor, Mila. I never have to be doing this. <laughs> I wonder if it's the same procedure for the W715 and whatnot. Although they have the swing out front panels, which is what I quite like about those. I'd love a Mila of my own. I would have wanted the washer dryer. But because of their excess weight, it's very impossible for me to move them in and out of the house. And that's why I can't get them, sadly. Screw the mold on this thing. I think. It's like Millie's revenge on all for me for all the things I've done. Right, Millie, you got me back. Let's make it harder for me. See how that just pulls straight out. I really don't, to be honest. It's the carbon brush holder. Let's have a look, shall we? Yikes. Oh, now this is a common problem with these. One brush wears down quicker than the other. So there's premature wear inside that. Okay. So I'm going to pull the brush out. God, I've got all that carbon dust on the floor. Yeah, I've read this online when I was looking at carbon brushes for this. Um, someone has the exact same model, the W562, and I think it happened to a 320, W3204. They said that the brushes were wearing down faster on one side than the other. Um, okay. Well, that explains it. Why the machine was still able to give a little bit of power? Because it means it was trying to. It was still giving it from one brush, but the other one was not committing to it. 
when you're fitting the old ones, right, refit them using the old holders. So I'm learning as I go along here. Use the old holes in the brushes, don't use the new ones because it, it will make it so much harder to push down. That is, you slot them there. Like perfection. So the old ones are more used to the shape. Make sure you follow the procedure, like I said, the smaller part always goes at the bottom. This is so messy, this is. And there was me thinking that this was going to be a, like a 10 minute job. are on tight. Same for the other one. So I'll demonstrate, take the old one off, old brush out and the new one goes straight in. Sits in like that. Drops into the holder with the large part facing between there. Makes you wonder, like, and that makes you wonder a lot. Oh, complex machines, eh? Yeah, you know, slots in there, and that's ready to go. However, my question is still not answered about how you're meant to put this in without the uh, brushes snapping on the armature. At least that's held in. Clips down, you're good to go. We'll bung it all in and then we'll right, test it. brushes in, interlock is locked. Let's give this a test. I hope the brushes are contacting properly. Wow. That doesn't sound good. That's that, that's that one that's flat. So well that's... There's something clicking around in the drum. That sounds awesome. It just needs to better the shape. And then there's the sound of the motor bearings, but. So that will wear down as the brushes uh, take the shape of the armature. It happens with all kinds of motors. So I'll cut that off there then. That's going to be really whiny. I've got that to look forward to. <laughs> Let's get back to getting right. all wired up and ready to go. Carbon brush holders back on. Swivel milli round. And it's time to put the side panel back on. Followed by the front panel and then now we'll put her on a spin. Alright. Lid back on. Everything back together. Milli is ready for service. Put the wet in there. Clean all the soot marks off her. That's good. <coughs> good um, educational fun that was. Right. Push it back in and away we go. machine on wheels anyway, I'll tell you that. Right, power on. Let's give that switch a little clean. Right, 
fast spin. Here we go. Let's have a little look. Really on, really. Dirty everywhere. Dirty girl, aren't you? First thing on the spin. Very whiny, it'll be. Well. That's an awesome sound. Right, really working with new carbon brushes now. Very whiny while the brush is bed in. That one like that actually sounds awesome. And there's the actual motor bearings themselves. And I'll calm down over like a few washes. Struggling on the half, but that's actually quite fun. Next time it'll be easier now to do that. I'm not so bad now. That's really smooth. Mark, come here. Come here. You're working again. Well done. Well done. Struggle and a half, but yeah, look, yeah, I haven't shown you what they are. This is what they are. That's worn right down, that is. But look, this is, um, I was looking on the internet. This model is known for uneven brush wear. Look, one wears down quicker than the other. That's 12 and a half years. That, that, those were stood. These normally only last about four years in a machine. Two if you have a hot point, juicy hot point, they eat their brushes and breakfast. Okay. The first time, guys, they're actually working on the beaver. I'm not going to say that they are not the easiest machine to work on starting on them. I'm going to leave that to spin. Uh, just got to let the brushes wear in. Reduce that sound. Uh, yeah, we'll come back when I start a wash. 